Hi, my name is Gail Cresci, and I'm a nutritionist and gut microbiome researcher at the Cleveland Clinic. Today we're going to talk about the gut microbiome, why it's good for us, and factors that we know can influence it. The gut microbiota is a term used to describe all the microbes that reside within our intestinal tract, and that's trillions. So the gut microbiota is comprised of bacteria, fungi, yeasts, and viruses. These are all good, and like I said, they help maintain our overall health. The gut microbiome is the gut microbiota plus all their genetic material. These terms are often used interchangeably, and I may use them interchangeably here today. So what have we learned about the gut microbiome? Well, over the last couple decades, we've learned how important it is to, like I said, maintain our overall health. We've learned that we start to be colonized in utero, but the majority of colonization of an infant occurs with the delivery mode. And that infants born by vaginal delivery versus cesarean section have different colonization patterns of their gut microbiota. Then the other factor that majorly influences the gut microbiota in early life is the feeding method, whether we're fed by breast milk or by formula. But by the age of three, our gut microbiota pattern resembles that of what we will have as an adult. So we know that the gut microbiota helps us synthesize different vitamins and nutrients that are essential for our health, such as vitamin K. The gut microbiota also helps with the synthesis of different enzymes that helps break down food stuff. And we know that in communication with our intestinal tract, the gut microbiome helps maintain intestinal immune function and helps keep inflammation at bay. So together, our gut microbiota, which like I said, is comprised of trillions of microbes in communication with their intestinal tract, helps maintain overall health for the human. Now, like I mentioned, our gut microbiome is established by the age of three. However, there's different factors that can influence it. And one of the main influencers on the gut microbiota is the diet. So we know that the gut microbiota likes to be fed a diet that is rich in fermentable, soluble fibers. However, most humans don't consume adequate fiber in their diet. And we know that people who consume more of a Western diet that's high in fat, high in simple sugars, and low in fiber have differences in their microbiome compared to those that follow more of a vegan or vegetarian type based diet or plant-based diet. We also know that medications can greatly influence the gut microbiota, and mostly we think about antibiotics. So we know that antibiotics destroy pathogenic bacteria, but they also affect the good bacteria residing within our intestinal tract. Certain antibiotics have greater effects than others. Most people will rebound after taking an antibiotic to their previous state of their gut microbiota, but in some individuals, um, that take even one course of antibiotics, or those that have to take multiple courses of antibiotics, there can be really negative effects on the gut microbiota. And as a consequence of that, we see that there's alterations in these beneficial byproducts as well as immune function within the intestinal tract and the body as a whole. We also know that stress can really alter the gut microbiota. So there's different types of stress. We know that psychological stress has a negative impact on the gut microbiota. And people with depression or other types of um, like post-traumatic stress syndrome have alterations in their gut microbiota compared to those that don't have that type of stress. We also know that physiological stress, such as, or metabolic stress, such as if you end up in the hospital, or we're now talking about COVID-19 right now. So we know that these metabolic insults, inflammation, infection, can affect the gut microbiota in a negative way. And in fact, that can lend to more of the infections and compromised immune state in our body. The environment can greatly affect the gut microbiota. So if we think about our food supply and our water supply, so they contain different nutrients that come from the soil, or they may have different uh, bacteria exposures. So all of this, because we eat and drink these, and this is the nourishment for our gut microbiota, can affect the overall composition of the microbiota. Not saying that that's a bad thing, it's just that we know that people in different geographical regions 
have different composition of their gut microbiota. Lastly, what I'll discuss is the aging process. So we know that infants have a different microbiota than adolescents and young adults. And then as we age in the elderly population, there's also compositional changes in the gut microbiota. And as a result, there's alterations in these beneficial byproducts. This is just something that happens with life, but also if you think about the aging process, all these other factors that I already mentioned, we likely have had those exposures as well. So in summary, I hope I've been able to provide you a simple overview of the gut microbiota and how it could benefit us as our host. Thank you.